Okay, this is a task one uh, evaluation for uh, another Mr. Khan. This is the second Khan in a row I've uh, done on a task one. And uh, you have chosen here a pie graph uh, assembly here, three pie graphs, that I've seen for years and years and never actually done a review on because I couldn't understand it. It was confusing. I never took the time. I never had to. Uh, um to try to understand this particular, uh, these particular graphs and what they showed and ana analyze them to find the key features. So first thing, I want to applaud you for choosing this particular task. It's not an easy one. Um, so let's analyze it in detail and figure out what it's showing us. The first thing to understand about pie graphs is that they all, that they represent the entirety of whatever it is you're measuring. Okay, all of the sodium, all of the sodium, all of the saturated fat, all of the added sugar in a day is represented in these charts. Okay, so let's say an average day you consumed 100 grams of sodium. I don't know, that probably sounds like, a, that's probably a lot. 100 grams, yeah, that's a lot of sodium. Um, anyway, let's say it was, 100 milligrams, regardless, whatever it was, then the average American had 43% or you know, 430 or 43 milligrams, if that's 100, of um, that sodium came to that person during dinner. Okay, there. 29% came to it from lunch, 14 and 14 for snacks and breakfast, respectively. So that's what we're looking at here. The percentage of your total daily intake, I drink, you know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the total amount is for an average person, this is where it comes from, okay? Where, it, where, where do we, where does this stuff find its way into our bodies? That's what we're looking at. Now, when I... Looking at things like this, I don't, I don't want to look at the numbers straight away. Instead, I want to sort of unfocus my eyes and look at it with unfocused eyes and, and just look for the colors and see if anything sort of jumps out at you as being dominant, as being, um, you know, I hate to say it. I hate to say that you should look for the most and the least but that's what we've got here. This is a, there's no time to change here. There's no trends. There's nothing like that. All we have to do is look at the proportions and see where they match up and see where they, how we can divide this information into groups. Okay, so when I unfocus my eyes, it looks pretty apparent that black uh, is the dominant color in two out of three, and it's the second in the third one. So, uh, does that mean that uh, dinner is the worst meal of the day? No, not necessarily. Most of us eat more at dinner than any other meal. But anyway, that's, that's not even an analysis that we're looking for. We can see it is that um, it's the highest number there in, in uh, sodium. We get the, uh, the greatest percentage of sodium comes from dinner. The greatest percentage of saturated fat comes from dinner. And it's second for sure, um, uh, when it comes to added sugar, okay? What else jumps out at you? Well, the, um, the lunch and breakfast ones, they barely change at all. Uh, there's a little bit of more of a change in um, lunch, but the biggest variation is in the white area. You've got the um, uh, sodium comes, is, is, is uh, or snacks, snacks. Only 14% of our sodium comes from snacks, but 42% of our added sugar comes from snacks. Okay, great. So what can I say? What would be my overview? Overall, it can be seen that dinner, uh, um, that, the, that the highest percentage of, all th um, of the three nutrients overall is consumed during dinner. Um, uh, whereas the widest variation, the biggest variation between 
the um, meal t- between the meals comes in the form of s- snacks. Okay, I'm back, and now in color. The uh, colors represent the band descriptors and what you need to be looking at, and where you are, um, and, and how this writing um, affects your brand uh, scores. Okay, yellow is lexical resources or vocabulary, and in this case, the ability to sh- the ability to paraphrase by not using the same words in the um, in your introduction as you have in the question. And although you have changed some of the words, the words remain in the same order, essentially. Okay, you want to change the order and the words if you can. Um, So the average, the average of three types of nutrients, three types of nutrients. It's the exact same words. Okay, consume. uh, And now, um, Americans uh, is plural, yes, but... Which Americans? Which ones are you talking about? It could, it's, it's not one group of Americans, it's all Americans. So when we use a plural noun, like Americans, and it doesn't matter if it's um, you know, a proper noun or not, if we're talking about the group in general, okay, in general, all of them, we would just say Americans, not the Americans. So that's green for grammar. Uh, and you don't need that comma there. In fact, you don't need that entire ending during their course of meals. Well, yeah, not during their course of exercise. Okay. And then you add from the question, it says all of which may be unhealthy if eaten too much. Now, the um, the first thing you need to do is um, uh, remember that you're supposed to summarize. You're supposed to include the most important information and only that. Is the fact that this stuff is, um, first of all, is it even on the chart? No, it's not on the chart. It's in the description of the chart. So it's not there. You're describing something that doesn't exist. Um, or exists only in the form of the instructions. You don't need to talk about the unhealthy effects of these nutrients. By the way, nutrients means something that we need in order to live. So we need all of these things to a certain extent. All right. So uh, moving on. Where were you? Okay. Now, in the, in the second paragraph, you should include your overview. Okay. Why should you include it there? Because you get it out of the way, and then you can use your overview as a guide towards writing your next two paragraphs. Your ideas in your overview should be what determines what you put in your paragraphs. Okay, so where was I? Um, right, in the last meal of the day, right, right, right but also for saturated fatty items. Now, it is not the consumption of saturated fatty items. It's saturated fat. That is a, a, a chemical a nutrient, a thing. Uh, it's not the items. It's nothing to do with items. And that comma does not belong there. And also, the use of the word peak. Not only the consumption of sodium is at its peak, um, Peak is used for a line graph, sort of change over time. When is the snack? Is that at a particular time of the day? No, a snack can come at any time of the day. So there is no timing here. There's no peaks. Not only, but also. Someone told you that you have to include not only, but also in every essay to get a good mark. Not true. Uh, okay. Um, all right, but now it is, it is at its highest, 43 and 37 percent, respectively. Okay, correct. Yes, ding, 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 points for you. You have identified the main feature of this graph, which is those two numbers there, the highest. But it's easy to spot the highest, okay? 
Do you clump it in and notice that that added sugar is also um, at the second highest of um, nutrients that are consumed in that time? No, you don't. In fact, you go the other way around. Um, in fact, you, you're going you're gonna to bring up, however, it was consumed. Okay, now, what is it? It is. It was consumed at a low rate of about 14% in the breakfast and 16% for saturated food items. Saturated food items? What? In snack time, snacks time. Okay, that is blue because it's incoherent, meaning it doesn't make any sense at all. Don't understand it. 14% in the breakfast. We never put the before breakfast. Okay, and now here's trend uh, cropping in. And like peak, trend requires time, change over time. This is not a trend. This is just an occurrence. This trend was reversed for sugary items. What trend? Okay, well, sugary items. Okay, sugary items. Sugary items. No, just sugar. It is, uh, we've got a comma here. Don't know where the comma goes. It is consumed at a minimal amount during lunch and dinner with 23 and 19%. Okay, now, dinner is the second most. Second highest number there. It is not minimal okay 19 percent nevertheless no, nevertheless however they don't belong in task one task one is about information and data and it's not about opinions things like nevertheless and although you can get away with however but those they, they just don't belong in task one nevertheless its consumption during the first meal of the day is the highest with 42 percent okay now this is when you're going to run into uh, problems with accuracy okay accuracy is very important what is the first meal of the day it's breakfast it's not snacks so this is inaccurate Okay, all in all, is this your overview? All in all, the people of the United States of America consumed all the nutrients in their typical meals. This statement means nothing. They consumed all the, they consumed all the nutrients in their typical meals. Yes, they did. Yes. And then once we can we come back with these nutrients are unhealthy if they are eaten way too much. Not just too much, but way too much. Unhealthy if eaten too much, if they are eaten too much. Doesn't belong in the essay to begin with, definitely not twice. Okay, so what would a, a better essay that looks like this look like? Well, I feel compelled to actually write it out. Okay, secret Joko way of opening your task one. It's not me, I was taught, I was taught this by an old IELTS veteran who had been teaching the IELTS test since it started, okay, uh, there are three pie graphs which illustrate which illustrate um, mm -hmm, which which illustrate okay by using which here. What I've done is created a relative clause. I've created a complex sentence right at the very start, which helps with my grammar, and it gives me a structure from which I can paraphrase um, the contents of the graphic.
Okay, this is a rather long overview. Um, it is the whole thing is an overview, uh, but I can now follow this. Or some of this has been um, uh, specifically. I want to concentrate on dinner and snacks. Okay, so now you're going to use a four paragraph structure. First paragraph, just state what the what the graph shows. Then your overview. That's it. Then. You take a look at your overview and you decide, and what is the first part of the overview? It's about dinner. So my next paragraph is about dinner. Okay, um, so. I see. Okay, this whole thing should be in the present tense. So I'm going to change it now. Done in 10 minutes. So what ha what has happened here in this um, overview? Well, it's, it's not very long, is it? Doesn't matter. There's no word count in, in IELTS anymore. What I've done is presented a clear overview. Overall, it can be seen that dinner was the meal during which the greatest proportion of these nutrients, uh, it can be, I should say that are consumed here, uh, instead of um, uh, lunch and breakfast were relatively equal and snacks showed the greatest variation. Okay, note. I don't include any other information about breakfast and lunch. Why? Because they're nothing. They're not important information, except for the fact that they were equal. About 40% of the daily sodium and saturated fat intake intakes takes place at dinner. None of the other three noted meals accounted for even a third of sodium or fat. This, these words here, like a third, about 40%. Um, these carrier nouns are um, very important, according to Raphael, to getting a high score in task one. The regular category of snacks. Now, a regular category, I'm casting judgment on it, but oh, what do I mean by snacks? So, Americans consuming 42% of a day's added sugar. At this point, I thought I needed to be specific to get some, you always want to get some real data in there. 42% of a day's added sugar, by contrast. And you also need to make comparisons. I have made comparisons in the overview, but I wanted to really make it specific here that I was making a comparison, by, con by contrast, comparing 42 to 14. Okay, I hope that helps.